Welcome to a game between Cassord in red, starting her with Cloakabots and a Recon Commander that can jump. And uh, Lawsome9 that requested this replay is playing also playing Cloakly with a Engineer Commander, a Support Commander. So yeah, let the game begin. So Lawson was requesting this uh, game because yeah, he was wondering how to play Cloaky in this uh, on this map, and whether or not how he defends. He said he, he wanted uh, to raid. He had a trouble raiding, Cassord, while also having trouble defending. So let's see how it plays out. It looks like um, Lawson is going for a a bit of harassment, while Cassord is going much more economically. It is fairly easy to defend on this map, but a few early raiders can still it like still forces the enemy to to defend quite a bit. So it's not wrong to send out three raiders like this, even though it's kind of easy to defend. So, but yeah, you gotta it, this map. Yeah, it's pretty economic because it's pretty easy to defend these starting positions. Uh, and we look here. This clay goes two versus one and loses. Lawson didn't have time. I uh, didn't react in time to retreat. Yeah, if you go in two versus one, you have to retreat basically if you're facing glaive versus glaive. So yeah. Meanwhile, this raiding could be pretty successful, uh, but Lawson is just not on time. Yeah, he's yeah. If he had sent the units here earlier, he might have been able to kill this conjurer before the two glaives arrives. Uh, so that's the thing that's easy to like slip up and forget about these raiders. And now it's two versus two. It, it, potentially, he could still. If he's lucky, he could still kill his glaives, or if he managed to go two versus one and kill them one by one, then he can easily kill those glaives and then kill the conjurer. But there's more coming up from Cassord. Uh, meanwhile, um, yeah, Lawsome is expanding kind of slowly. Yeah, as I said, you want to make economy on this map because there's a lot of economy and it's pretty easy to uh, expand uh, and defend the mixes. And here, uh, Lawson goes, yeah, two versus three, and he kills one Glaive and loses two. Yeah, he should probably run away instead, um, if he had uh, attention. Uh, also something, oh, that's a very defensive Lotus turret. Like, I mean, why do you build the Lotus turret all the way back here? It's protecting these mexes, but if you place the Lotus turret here, for example, it's also protecting these mexes. You can place one there and one there you also are protecting these positions, so... Yeah, that seems a bit overly defensive, or rather you could place the defenses in a better spot. Like, there's only two places where glaives can go, and now your glaives were out of position and you didn't have a radar, you surely could have spotted the incoming glaives with these. But yeah, losing that conjurer was a bit of a mistake. Like, you probably want to have radar, so it's easier to see. Even, like, if you're just running by the enemy with a single glaive, you might miss it. Because, yeah, they might just be at the edge of the line of sight, and you don't have much. And maybe if you're not watching the, the radar, the minimap so much, yeah, you might miss it. So, it's good to have a radar on this map. Like, here or here is good to have a radar. And then it's easier to see incoming radars. Yeah, and now, in this uh, in this case, Cassord is, yeah, he's... His, uh, his top is completely open for raiding. Uh, so, yeah, it's always something to keep in mind. Like, send a raider off there. Maybe you can see if the enemy has a ECS expanding without defenses. And, yeah, then you can raid pretty well. Instead, you're losing your glaives one by one to this very large force. Like, I think it was almost even number of glaives in the beginning. But then you didn't keep attention on it and you left, left it there. And now you kill what? You kill, yeah, the enemy lost one glaive and you lost like seven or eight. So yeah, that was a pretty big blow because because of inattentiveness. It's something you have to keep in mind. Like if the enemy keeps us yes, fighting your glaives one we one Like in this situation it was five with five, but Kassar chose to be retreat. So he kills, he kills two glaives and yeah, and loses none and retreats. And then the glaives re automatically regenerate their health, so that's pretty good by by Kassor to retreat them and uh, let them regenerate after taking damage and taking out two glaives. So he's playing he's playing pretty well with his glaives there. 
And now this raiding opportunity is closed. Uh, he's starting to build defenses and sending more glaives and a warrior here. Uh, meanwhile, you probably want to keep put your expanding co expanding conjurers, their, your builders, on high priority so your mixes get built faster. Uh, also on this map, wind is pretty good. Like if you build wind up here, it's super good. Like one minimum wind is super good. They're basically twice as good as solars, basically. Uh, yeah. More than twice as good as solar, basically. When you're paying this price. Um, when you're getting this good wind. Even down here, you should probably not be building solars down here. 0 0.7 minimum wind is still really good. That's a lot better than solars. Uh, so yeah, you still like radar, and here comes two versus one glaive. If you're lucky, you're gonna kill one glaive with your glaive. Yeah, you're lucky there. It was ducking and rearing. And the enemy's not reacting in time, and you're reacting in time. So yeah, that was lucky for you that you didn't lose your con and max there. Um, So yeah, you're still lacking radar and you're sending out your raiding force and then you're being intercepted by these glaives. They could easily take out the single lotus turret there, so yeah. But Castler is being a bit inattentive, so he loses three glaives to one lotus turret without killing it. I guess he's uh, distracted over here. That's kind of lucky for you because otherwise you could have lost all these mixes. Uh, and the Lotus turret. But you managed to clean it up pretty nicely. Um, so at this point it looks like you're excessing a bit. If we check the excess here, metal excess. Yeah, you start... Yeah, the en enemies excessed a bit. So yeah, in metal used... Yeah, you're still a bit ahead on metal used. And metal produced, so that's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, you sent out this Reaver. It was the Riot, and yeah. Alone against this many glaives and a lotus turret, yeah, it, it's pretty easy to kill the warrior if you're just pushing like this. That was a really small armor to push on. On the other, on one hand, then we didn't have any defense here, so making an unable to expand here is pretty good. And you still lack radar to see these incoming glaives. And yeah, you could have had if you had radar, your uh, radars could have been in. I mean, your radars could have been in position to uh, inter to stop them. Or maybe you could even have built, a ah, maybe not built a Lotus with a single Conjurer. Maybe. If you're reckoning quickly with single Conjurer and have them on high priority, you can build a Lotus Earth if you see them on max range of the radar before they get to you, so to speak. Um, so yeah, at this point you're kind of being unexpanded, although you have taken this area. So the enemy has taken this area, but they haven't taken their forward mixes, which puts you pretty evenly on the economy. Uh, yeah. I see you're reclaiming a bit here. Yeah, you're still lacking radar, like, you're sending some radar here, which is good to have, but you could have a radar here, and you would see all the way over here. If you put the radar here, you could see all the way here, and you will see incoming radars. You can even put maybe the radar is up there, and you defend up there, instead of so far back. And how is... yeah. How is Castle managing? He's being a bit inattentive, but you're also... Yeah, that's a pretty good trade from you. Then you only kill one metal extractor, which isn't too big of a deal. And yeah, you trade it pretty evenly on glaives. So yeah. At the top right here, you can see that Castle is a bit ahead in attrition. So he has killed more value. Like the value kill is higher. And the value lost for Lawson is higher. So yeah, that's a bit. You can you can enable that if you want to get a rough estimate of how you're doing. In terms of trades, this was a pretty bad trade. I mean, you should probably have been paying attention to this attack. The glaive amount was about even, and then you, you probably didn't know about this lotus turret. But if you're paying attention, and you see like two lotus turrets there, and maybe one there, yeah, maybe it's time to retreat. Uh, so yeah. And that's the thing, you probably want to keep your Ronins on fight, on attack moves, so they don't move up all the way with the Glaives. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna pay a bit more attention to how you manage that earlier, I mean later. And here's a Lone Reaver, and it can easily get taken out by the Ronins. Uh, yeah. 
you have, yeah, a few lotus rifts here, you could flank this army with the glaives, would it be pretty good? How many glaives do you have? You have about 13 glaives, and he has about how many glaives? Yeah, about 16 glaives. Oh, it's pretty even. Could go out of way. And you have much, a lot more glaives here. Uh, this is a weird position to build your Strider Hub in. I'm not sure why you would build it there. Like, first paying 8700 for the Strider Hub and then having to pay 3500 for the Dante, that's a large investment. And the time, like, you want to minimize the amount of time you stay. Uh, like, oh, that's a pretty good, you're getting the Ronins, that's pretty nice. Now you could go forward with the uh, Warriors. And if the Warriors lead the charge when the Ronins are dead, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, then you can kill the Glaze pretty effectively. Yeah, you're doing that pretty well. Meanwhile, you're still lacking radar in this area. You're expanding here, that's good. But yeah, here comes a big raiding force, and you see it. That's, this is the first point to saw it. If you had the radar here, you would have seen it earlier. If you had the radar here, you would have seen it even, uh, even earlier. But yeah, you have a raiding force of your own ready, and it's about the same size. Um, yeah, so that's nice. And you avoid running them in one by one in a line, that's good. You spread them out in a line, that's good. So they don't die one by one. Should you go in here? Uh, you could probably, if you're careful and like try to spread out as much as you can, you could probably go in here. The numbers are pretty even, so... Yeah, but your rodents are doing pretty well. These uh, glaives aren't hold fire, so they're not reacting. That's nice. Yeah, your glaives are on maneuvers, so they might run in and die if you put them too much forward. Um, so yeah, they, so yeah, Castle wasn't reacting there and lost quite a few uh, glaives there. Uh, will you react in time for his counter charge? Yes, you do. But yet again, you're lacking radar in the middle of the map and you were, oh, I guess you were occupied here. So yeah, radars are good. You can be like, you should have, at this point you should have a radar here. A forward radar here would be good. You will see the enemy already when they're coming over here. If you have a radar in here or here. It's really good to have a radar, or several on this map, like... You have to consider the radar shadows on this map, so you probably want to, like, place them on ridge hills. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you're, I guess you're fighting at two points at the same time in this situation. But your warriors are doing pretty decently. You could maybe advance in advancing into this position i mean you can do it if you get some uh, like if you get some slings that's pretty good like if you have some ronins and some reavers and some sling that's a pretty good unit combo like these lotus turrets fighting them uphill can be hard so but having some slings slings should still have enough range to shoot at them from downhill here so yeah then you can advance more easily so to speak um, and this, should you put the uh, glaze on hold fire or maneuver? Uh, it, I have a hotkey to switch them between, so I can just use a hotkey uh, to switch them between hold fire and maneuver. Uh, because, yeah, they the glaze might run in one by one and die on their own. But yeah, you can see your warriors are doing pretty well here. Like, Kassord isn't paying enough attention to this attack. Uh, um, yeah, but yeah, I generally recommend for new players to use maneuver on their glaives. Um, yeah. But if you have the attention, you can kind of be switching in between maneuver and hold position due to your needs. You you saw one at one point, Castle was losing. Uh, Castle was losing his glaives to Ronis because he had him in hold position while the Ronis was firing at them. And still, you have no rider here, so you can't really send a force here to protect your mixes in time. Um, which is kind of bad. Like, this is a highly defensive position. Um, running up this hill uh, means that your glaives are going to be really slow when they're trying to move up. And a star does all this load to start will have a lot longer time to fire at the at the 
uh, fire at downhill into the glaives. Stardust also get longer range when you're fighting uphill. I mean, when you're, when you're shooting downhill. And slings as well. If the enemy has a lot of slings up here, they can have much longer range than the downhill slings. The slings should should still have enough range, range uphill this hill to outrange the stinger and outrange the lotus herds and everything. So yeah, if you want to advance on this position, you should use some slings and maybe have some warriors and rodents to protect them. Yeah. But at this point, you're kind of falling behind. Your enemy is kind of accessing. Let's see the metal access here. Oh, the enemy has been accessing quite a bit. So you still have the metal used. Uh, yeah. And you made the sniper as well. But still, at this point, your enemy is going to have a lot bigger recoil than you. Uh, if you're unable to take your hill and defend them. Yeah, your enemy is being really defensive, so it will be hard, hard to advance against this. But a slow push with like Ronins and Warriors and Slings would probably do decently against this one. It depends, you might end up, end up in a situation when you get Ronin versus Ronins and some Warriors mix in to protect against the Glaives and some Slings shooting down the light defenses. And then it's about like how much mass you go, got and how well you manage your units and stuff like that. But the warriors are pretty good against glaives, like these glaives just got slaughtered against these two glaives trying to go up this little hill. They tried to go up this little hill and clumped up and suffered greatly from the area effect of the uh, the warriors, the reavers, I mean. Warrior is an old name for uh, those. So, at this point, this is only 10 build power, you're only gonna build 10 metal per second. On this Dante and I'm not sure why you're building it there like I guess you want to keep your production up while you're making this Dante and yeah I mean first you're paying 700 you're basically gonna be have to pay 4200 before your uh, that this Dante is out so while you're building that slowly, it means that you're going to be lacking uh, army value out on the rest of the map that you can't contend with. So if you delay the Strider hub and build it next to your other caretakers, that's usually a better idea. Like here, then you can delay it and build it later. Uh, and you don't have to like have like, yeah, it's basically like having 4200 in a bank before you can use the Dante. But if you're gonna start saving for the Dante earlier, like you build it slowly, yeah, then you're gonna have a smaller arm, army earlier, so... Yeah, oof, this might be bad. This might be the ticks that you were talking about. Although you're stunning quite a bit of glaives, so... Eh, that was actually decent usage. You lost the sniper before you could send in. If you had sent the imp a bit earlier, yeah, you might have been fine. You might not even have lost the sniper there, but I guess you weren't paying enough attention there. Meanwhile, you're trying to raid, but you're being a bit distracted. And I guess, yeah. I guess if you put the uh, glaives in range of a Lotus Earth, they will just stand there and die. But yeah, the Ronins are gonna clean up this pretty well. But at this point, you're probably too far behind. Uh, uh, I guess you have been pretty even all the game. You're starting to fall behind now. That's probably due to the economic difference. If your enemy has stopped accessing. And you have, sadly you have no warrior here to shoot downhill. Like having a warrior in this mix would have been huge. Like Glaives trying to advance on a warrior uphill. That's just suicide. Like one, uh, one warrior might have been able to take out all these Glaives uphill. When they're trying to go uphill. Uh, yeah, that's a problem. Snipers, like if they're skirmishing automatically in their hills. They might get stuck on a hill. Like, if a sniper is going back like this, yeah, then it's gonna get here. And it's gonna be a try to go back here when enemy comes, and it's not gonna be able to go anywhere further. So managing snipers in hills like this, um, yeah, that could be pretty hard. And at this point, your Dante was idle for so long. A Dante is really good against uh, Cloaky Bots, because they have the Napal missiles, and 
Cloaker really struggles against Napalm Missiles. You can send the Soul off and you will kill a lot of enemies with that. So a dent is a pretty good idea against uh, Cloaky Bots. And now you're helping to build with your command at least. That means, yeah, you're gonna build the dent a bit faster. And it looks like you are gonna be re-expanding. Oh, and there's a lot of reclaim. And this is mostly in your area. So th most of the area is in your territory. So yeah, this is a huge wreck field that could turn the game around for you. Uh, should you send out the Lone Dante against Clokis? I mean, you can kinda do it. But it's nice to have a warrior or two, maybe to protect flanks if it comes like a massive wave of glaives or something. But yeah. Also against this, you can't really, if against this much defense, you might be able to kill it. But then the Dante will be weak and it's not quite worth it. Like it's better arguably to do this and just send some Naples sol solvers off and avoid these heavy concentration of stingers and lotus turrets and defense. Because yeah, you want to try to keep the, your Dante healthy. You want to avoid it getting low. And it looks like the enemy has made a scorpion to counter your Dante and a scorpion is a perfect counter. For a Dante, if you just can um, avoid the fire solo, so you don't reveal the scorpion. Like, the scorpion is cloaked on its own. Uh, three shouldn't be enough. Uh, I guess, I mean, you didn't really need to stun with the... Uh, with, uh, with the ticks, ticks. But yeah, like the scorpion uh, degun or the scorpion multi-manual fire, it can easily stun a Dante if it just gets in range, so that would probably have been enough. But yeah, that's the thing. A lone scorpion can easily counter a Dante. Like if the Dante gets in range of the scorpion and the enemy just uses their manual fire to stun the Dante, the Dante is toast, basically. So that was a good counter by Cassord uh, to make a scorpion. Uh, yeah, the advantage does the... I wouldn't say that the... Dante has an advantage against the Scorpion 1v1. One one. Uh, the, the only thing the Dantes can hope to do is to manual, uh, manual fire uh, the Scorpion and then... Uh, uh, what would you call it? Decent ticks there. Yeah, it's to manual fire... is to manual... the Dante can manual fire the ground and then burn all of the... and burn the Scorpion and then run away because Dante is faster. Like it's 52 versus 39, so the Dante can escape. The Dante can choose to escape if it knows when the Scorpion is nearby. But yeah, the Scorpion has the advantage of Cloak, so it, if you don't see it coming, yeah, the Scorpion can surprise you and take the engagement and stun the Dante if it's low. On the other hand, a Scorpion can be quite easily overrun by stuff like Glaives and Ronins. Because, yeah, it doesn't have quite the damage potential of a Dante. And the Dante has fire. Yeah, the Dante is a better ride in that sense. Uh, so, yeah, let's look at how far behind you are at this point. Um, yeah, you're starting to fall behind pretty badly there. And this is something, yeah, you have a Dante here as well. You always want to, maybe you want to send some cons to always be repairing. Your Dante. Uh, yeah. So that your Dante is up, is healthy, so to speak. Because if it's healthy, it makes it harder to stun it. Like, the, the Scorpion can stun it with one good uh, stunning run, so to speak. But yeah. But then it might, if it, is, it, if it has higher health, it's more likely to escape if you're like surrounded with scorpion with dronins and, and uh, glaives and such. Uh, ultimatum building at 20 metal per second or it's more like, yeah, no, yes, no. <laughs> That's never gonna finish. The, you don't have enough economy. I mean, you could do so much with 24,000 metal. 
like you can get how many scorps can you get you can get eight scorpions and imagine imagine you're trying to hold off against eight scorpions with a much smaller army it's like you wouldn't be able to do it and you're already behind so i'm not sure why, why you would go for a a uh, detriment but yeah yeah, this Tanti is going to be able to clean up this army pretty well with the support of the Ronins and other units. Meanwhile, you lost this little army. And yeah, you you have basically been economically behind for a long time now. Like, the enemy has been, yeah, for like, yeah, already like uh, 12 minutes ago, the enemy was starting to get ahead, or 30 minutes, or 11 minutes ago. But yeah, the enemy was also excessing a bit. Oh, that's a nice solo. That's a thing that the Dante can just... It can just eliminate a bunch of glaives if they're bunched up like this. Uh, you could struggle a bit if the enemy gets a very good surround. If the Dante is completely on open ground. Yeah, you can struggle a bit uh, then. Yeah, but if you have the attention... Uh, it's, it's a bit of a risk now that the enemy has scorpions. Is that you can put the Dante here and then just use the manual fire weapon with the Napalm missions all the time as often as you can. When you have the attention and burn down this front line. Burning down a stinger will take quite some time. Like you can stand outside the stinger range and try to fire against it towards its general direction. And hope some missiles hit. And yeah, that it will take a long time to get through it like that. This is a caretaker that might have been, might be have to be destroyed before you can really de destroy the stinger but yeah it's something that you can do with the dante you can use it as a makeshift artillery and it's a pretty good makeshift artillery especially against uh, cloaky bombs like you can burn down snipers you can burn down slingers that have very low health yeah m most units really suffer against a dante's napalm missile missiles like the cloak units yeah, and this is a troublesome position you're in when you have like, you know that the enemy has scorpions around and it becomes a question, do you dare to leave a Dante alone like this? If you don't see the enemy scorpion coming, yeah, you're just gonna lose your Dante if it's alone like this. So it's a tricky situation to be in. And there goes the stun on the Dante. And yeah, it should be pretty much dead. You have a sniper there. Oh, the sniper is going to scare away the scorpion. That's lucky for you. I guess you have two snipers. Yeah. Dante versus Dante fight. Uh, oh, the sniper got hit. Let's see if it dies later. Uh, it's going to burn for a long time. So yeah, Dante versus Dante are usually quite inconclusive. Because, the, especially the heat race. The heat race does more damage uh, the closer the unit gets. And if the Dante is work, walking away, if your Dante is walking away and the enemy Dante is walking into the fire beams, you're gonna deal more damage because the fire beams has to travel less time. Uh, because yeah, the enemy is going towards your Dante, and your Dante is going away. So it's quite easy to just retreat from a Dante fight because if the enemy Dante tries to follow you, they take more damage. So they need to be quite far ahead if you're gonna be able to finish you. So. Dante fights, Dante versus Dante are usually pretty inconclusive, but considering he had the scorpion there and had you stunned, yeah, he could easily have killed your Dante there. But yeah, this is a perfect situation. Oh, as and this sniper, it didn't die. This would be a perfect situation to use your name palm fire missiles. Like you probably know they're somewhere around here, so you just shoot somewhere. Uh, yeah, you just shoot something and hope you hit a sniper. And there's a lot of units here, so yeah. The enemy has an owl, which makes highest the radar dots from you, which is pretty good. Although, wait, you never built radar on this map? Yeah, you never built any radar on this map, in this match, so... Yeah, that's pretty bad. So let's see, you have spent... Uh, almost 8,000 metal now. What could that have been? That could have been two Dantes, two, uh, almost three Scorpions, not quite, like two and a half Scorpions. Yeah, they could be doing a lot. You could have been switching to artillery. 
Although I guess Dante is a pretty good artillery. Like if you just use Dante's as artillery, like imagine having two extra Dantes here and just shooting the Napal missiles all the time. That's basically artillery. And the enemy just has what yeah, the cloaky bots are just gonna struggle so much against that. Uh, it's just they have to do something else. They have to do scorpions or something else. And that's the thing, like one Dante versus one Dante. Yeah, it's pretty one. I mean, one Dante versus one scorpion. Yeah, it's pretty one-sided. Oh, let's see. This is a massive amount of waves. Looks like they're gonna be able to get the Dante actually. Yeah, that's the thing. If you don't have any like. If the enemy is being able to surround your damp like that, like you send off one missile salvo, that, but that wasn't enough. So yeah. So having like one or two warriors next to that damp, they would have saved it. So a damp can, even though it's a riot, uh, a riot strider, it can still be overrun, so to speak. Yeah. Anyway. On the theoretical, so imagine if you have like three Dantes here all the time. Uh, like you're shooting Napal solvos all the time. And you're killing all the snipers, you're killing all the glaives, you're killing the slings. Maybe you can even advance up the hill or move towards the center and burn everything down here. And then you can keep your Dantes repaired. And yeah, that's much better than having how many percent? Yeah, it's like a 41% uh, detriment right now. That's then 10,000 value. That's that's uh, three. That's three extra Dantes uh, or like three Scorpions. Yeah. So yeah, three extra Dantes here, and yeah, you wouldn't be in this situation. You could have been advancing up this hill. Uh, you could have been burning them down with Napal missile solvers all the time. One versus one, the Scorpion will win against Dante, and it's like you might catch it with an Apal Salvo and escape. Uh, but yeah, if you have three, three Dantes versus three uh, versus three Scorpions, you're gonna be firing Apal Salvos all the time, and then you're gonna be uncloaking the Scorpions, and the damage is gonna start to add up on the Scorpions. Like if they keep taking fire all the time, yeah, you burn away a few thousand health maybe they're down to like eight thousand health then it becomes quite tricky to like engage this once the scorpions get low on health it gets quite tricky to engage the the dantes like you're gonna take fire all the time and you have glazed and ronins that can kind of just overrun the scorpions and you're burning all the way all the sniper with the napal salvos and you're burning all the way the glaives with napal salvos and you have three dantes on the front line just shooting napal salvos all around all the time and then you're just yeah the scorpions are gonna find that tricky to deal with if they go too far maybe they get a stun off on a single dante that was exposed then you have two more gonna can follow up and a bunch of glaives that can run in against like lone scorpions that can't do yeah they can't do much against that maybe you send in all three uh, dantes at the same time maybe the enemy managed to get a stun off on all of them but now they're low in health and being surrounded by ronins and glaives yeah it's not hard to e deal with for just uh, yeah in that sense, Dantes scale really well against Cloaky, and adding a few like scorpions could be tricky to deal with if you're like in close combat and the and the scorpions get uh, uncloaked all the time. So, but more than that, if we look at economy, yeah, you were kind of falling behind because you didn't grab this hill. On the other hand, your enemy accessed a lot of metals, so you kind of stayed evenly more on metal use quite a lot of time. Uh, you could have been overdriving some more and making more wins, especially on this map. Yeah, wins is so OP. Your enemy made only wind and a fusion reactor. So, and the solar here, solars here on the low ground, which are easier to keep alive because they have higher health, much higher health, and they get armor when they close and get damaged. So yeah, building solars on the low ground, that's a pretty good idea. Uh, yeah, so your enemy was overrun much better. Uh, they start making a nuke, not relevant. That's basically the same as you making that Dante. Um, and yeah. 
what else? Yeah, you should make uh, winds on the high ground on this map. Like, if you look at the winds, uh, 0 0.1 1 is just much better than solars. Like, two of these cost the same as a solar, and they produce a minimum amount as a solar. And at the best, like, one solar versus two winds, at minimum they produce two. And at the times when you're lucky, uh, you're producing five. That's more than double uh, for the winds compared to a single solar. So, yeah. Uh, winds are double as good on this high ground and even down here I think the double as ground double as good yeah even down here 0 0.7 minimum minimum wind is really good so yeah it's like it's maybe when you get down to like 0 0.5 0 0.3 0 0.2 maybe you should make solar instead and here yeah you probably don't want to keep the fragile winds here unless you feel really protected here so yeah the solars are good down here yeah, and I didn't see you making a single sling. Like a good, a good unit combo against most in most matchups is to have slings, uh, warriors, and ronins, and then you can have some groups of glaives to like penetrate weaknesses in the enemy's composition. Like for example, you're making slings and uh, and ronins and uh, warriors. I mean reavers. Uh, warriors old name for reavers and then the enemy is pushing you back with like pure sniper or like pure uh, pure ronins yeah then you can take a bunch of glaze and run them in and try to kill the snipers and ronins and f or flank the flank the ronins and such and yeah um and slings have enough range to outrange these stingers and go even uphill and then advance upon this position Although you have to be a bit careful when you're going uphill because yeah, slings get less range, so you might have to be just out of range of the sling of the stinger. But yeah, regular fight command should do that. But you want to be careful so your warriors and ronins don't run into the stinger and other defenses range. But yeah, slings would just clear off this defense much earlier than you would have. And then I suggest using high priority when you're expanding and building mixes with cons so you don't get split resources. Oh, I forgot if you use low priority on the factory. Alternatively, you can just use low priority on the factory and yeah, your other construction will be not prioritized. Uh, building this strider hub in the, uh, in the, not in the middle. Uh, I mean, uh, Maybe you were trying to hide it, but yeah, building a strider that slowly, I don't see the point. Instead of building that strider so slowly, you can just put w delay the, produ the production of the strider hub and the Dante itself. And just have a bigger army before, and then when you choose to go to Dante, you put down the strider hub here. And then the caretakers can help the strider finish faster, and you don't have to be down on army for that much. You will only be down on army while you focus all your resources on the Dante. And the Dante is a really good choice against enemy's cloaky bots. Uh, if the enemy makes scorpions, yeah, you have to be careful not to be caught out by a scorpion because it can stun and kill your lone Dante easily. On the other hand, if you if you keep burning the other units with the Dante, a lone scorpion that's a bit damaged, it's pretty easy to just overrun with glaives or ronins. And then the enemy is going to struggle to finish off your Dante. So if you have three dancers and a bunch of glaives and ronins, you can burn the enemy enemy cloaky bots and then and, and damage their uh, scorpions a bit. And you can keep advancing. And if you get a uh, Dante stunned by a scorpion, you could probably overrun it with uh, with a uh, with your ronins and glaives. So yeah. So, yeah, you asked about ticks as well. I saw some decent tick, even though you left the ticks behind in your own line, like here, you managed to stun some of the enemy uh, uh, ticks. I mean, you managed to stun the enemy glaives, but it's tricky to use ticks. Um, it's, it requires a lot of practice to put them on the right place. Another pro strat is that you put your, you use, uh, use conjurers you can turn on conjurers and you enable their area cloaker then you can put uh, uh, ticks inside the range of the conjurers and just send them forward and stun some enemy glaives groups of glaives or romans or warriors even but that requires a b quite a lot of attention so i'd recommend you practice it a bit uh, to just use ticks against large group of units 
cloak ticks with conjures. So yeah, those are my tips for you. Uh, good luck and have fun.